Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at another affordable Mocha adapter. This one is from Translite. This is running with the Mocha 2.5 standard, and that means you can get up to 2.5 gigabits of bandwidth across the network. And this device has a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port on the back, so you can make use out of that bandwidth on a single device. Now, if you're not familiar with Mocha, it's a technology that allows you to extend your network through your cable TV coax wiring. The same cables that get you TV can also extend your network. You don't need TV service for this to work. You just need the wiring in your house. And if you do have TV service, this works alongside of it without interrupting or interfering with anything. It's a really neat technology. It's not as good as Ethernet if you're able to run Ethernet to every room in your house, but it's really close. And you'll see uh, just how well this will perform as we get further into the review here in just a second. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Translite. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And I should also let you know that the Mocha Alliance, which is the standards body for this technology, has sponsored content here on the channel in the past. However, they are not sponsoring this video. And before they sponsored me years ago, I discovered the technology and found it to be a really good solution and probably the best network extension technology out there. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. Now, the price on these Mocha devices has come down quite a bit because there is more competition in the marketplace. This one comes in at around $70. Let's take a closer look now at the hardware. There isn't much to these things, and in the default configuration, all you gotta do is just get them plugged into your cable TV wiring and they find each other. This is powered via USB, and it really consumes only about as much power as a cell phone charger, so it's not gonna add all that much to the electric bill. Uh, this one doesn't seem to get too hot when it's been on for a long period of time either. You do have an on-off switch, so if you do want to disable the network or a particular device, you just hit the switch there and unplug it. Now you're going to notice that there are two Ethernet jacks on here, and you can use both of these at the same time. So for example, you could plug your computer into the yellow port here, and then plug in a game console into the black port, or maybe run a wireless access point off of it or something like that. You've got access to both of these ports simultaneously. This is a two and a half gigabit ethernet port, so for the best speed, I would plug your computer into this one, but you have to make sure that your ethernet adapter supports the faster 2.5 gigabit speed, otherwise it will run back to the gigabit uh, speed profile. Now there are two coax jacks on here, and it's a little confusing as to how they worded things. So what you do with this is plug your cable jack from the wall into the port here labeled Mocha, and that will get it connected to the rest of the, the devices in the house. And then the in-out port here is where you would connect your cable box or television. So there's a built-in splitter in here that allows you to get on the Mocha network, but also allow your TV service to continue working in the room that you're installing the box. So I found that to be really helpful. Not all these Mocha adapters have those built-in splitters. You're also gonna see a button here for something called MPS, and this is a button to enable security on the network. So by default, uh, this Mocha device, when you plug it in, it'll just find anything else that's on the same segment of wire as it. So basically anything in your house will see it and connect to it. The challenge though is that sometimes your Mocha network can bleed outside the house so enabling security ensures that these devices have to specifically pair up with each other. Now once you set up security on the first device, adding additional devices is a lot easier because you just need to hold down that WPS button on the first device and the new one, and the new one will be able to get those security settings transferred to it automatically, and then it will join the secure network. Now, another thing you could consider that might be a little simpler is something called a point of entry filter. And what you can do is put that filter in where your cable TV wiring comes into the house and it will block any Mocha signals from going out of your home to other places in the neighborhood. So you can kind of figure out what might work best for you. It is a little complicated on these devices because you are dealing with RF technology over coax cables, but once you get it set up and working, these things I found 
uh, generally stay rock solid uh, once the initial uh, installation is ready. Now I have found that these boxes generally work right when you plug them in without having to do anything, but if you find that they're not finding each other on your coax network, you might want to look at the splitters you're using to distribute cable TV throughout your home. You need to make sure that any splitter or amplifier you're using in the house is Mocha compatible. Now generally I have found when you're searching for a splitter, the ones that support Mocha will say it in the title on the product page. So when I go on Amazon, I search for Mocha splitter and that's when I usually find something like I have here. And you can see here that the frequency range of this splitter is 5 to 2300 megahertz. And this easily covers all of the frequency ranges that your cable TV or satellite TV is using in addition to the frequencies that Mocha uses on the wire. And if you're having trouble getting things to connect, it could be some splitters in the wall are just not capable of carrying the frequencies that one of these boxes requires. And a lot of times switching out those splitters will magically make everything work. Now, according to the manual here, there is one more gotcha to talk about, and this is actually more than just a translite problem. This goes across all of these newer Mocha devices, and that is if you have a DOCSIS 3.1 cable modem. These are the cable modems that the big cable companies are rolling out for some of their higher speed gigabit services. And if you've got one of these, it's going to use some of the same frequencies that Mocha uses, and that includes Translite devices and other ones that are out there as well. And what you have to do in order for this to work alongside a DOCSIS 3.1 cable modem is to go in and adjust some settings. Now you can follow the steps here in the manual, or you can contact Translite and they'll send you a firmware updater and that will ensure that this Mocha device will not interfere with what the cable modem is using for its job. Now, I did ask Translite if this results in a reduction of performance, and it will. So this gives you out of the box about 2.5 gigabits of useful bandwidth. You're going to lose about 500 megabits when you enable this, so the usable bandwidth across your Mocha network will go from 2.5 gigabits to 2 gigabits. And for this review, we're going to be testing it at its full speed, just so you know. But again, if you got one of these newer cable modems, this is something you're going to have to think about. And what I love about Mocha is its performance, but there are some issues like we've just been talking about that you have to address before you get up and running with it. This is a new one. All right, let's take a look now at a performance test. And I have two of these boxes here on the desk to do this demonstration. Now, you generally need at least two of these for this to work. You need one that's going to be plugged into your router via Ethernet, and then you connect this one via coax cable to your cable TV wiring. And then this box here will represent one of the remote boxes that you might put somewhere else in the house. And if they are all on the same leg of coax cable, they'll just find each other. It's pretty cool. Now plugged in to the Ethernet jack on the remote box is this laptop. So when this laptop transmits data, it's going to go through the Ethernet cable, out through the coax cable, and into this box on the other side of the network. And if this one has to go out to the Internet, it will do so through the Ethernet cable here that's plugged into the router. So that's kind of the path that the data will take. And again, just imagine this one with the blue cable being in a remote room somewhere. Now, both the laptop and my network are multi-gigabit networks, which means that we are connected at 2.5 gigabits per second, but this would also work at a slower rate of speed. You can have up to 16 of these Mocha boxes on the network at one time, and you are not limited to just these 2.5 devices. If you have older Mocha devices, those older ones will work with the new ones, although the older ones will communicate with the new ones at the slower speed of the old one. However, just having old boxes on your network doesn't slow down the fast boxes. So even if I had a bunch of old Mocha devices, these two can exchange data at the faster 2.5 gigabit rate. So let's do some speed tests now and see how all of this works. So the first thing we're going to do is some internet testing with the speedtest.net app. And what's going to happen here is that we're going to initiate the command on the laptop. That command will go through the Ethernet cable, out to the coax, over to this box, and then out to the Internet. And at my house here, I have a 2 gigabit symmetrical fiber connection. So we should be able to pretty much max out 
what these boxes can do. So let's get that test started. And what we'll get reported first is a ping rate. And a lot of people ask, what's the latency that you can expect from Mocha? And it's about three to five milliseconds in my experience. Uh, generally on this test, if I'm connecting to the Boston Comcast server, I'm able to hit them at six milliseconds. And as you can see here, we're getting about nine. Uh, so it doesn't really add all that much latency to the network. And you can also see here that we're pretty much getting the full performance out of my internet service here. I'll run the test one more time just to see if we get similar results here. And again, right now what's happening is that uh, the data is being downloaded through the network. So it's coming in over the ethernet and then back out to the coax cable over to this one and then out to the ethernet cable that's connected to the laptop. And then when that test reverses here again, uh, that will start sending data out of the laptop and then back through that connection out to the internet again. So as you can see here, we're pretty much getting uh, what I would get normally for this internet connection on my regular ethernet network. Let's take a look now at a file transfer. I've got a six and a half gigabyte file that I'm going to push upstairs to a computer on my network that's connected to the multi gigabit network. And as you can see here, I'm getting about 280 megabytes per second pushing that file upstairs. So that is a pretty good result here. Gigabit speed is typically about 100 megabytes or so. So we're getting pretty close to that two and a half gigabit speed. Now what we're gonna do is copy that file back downstairs and see what kind of performance we get. All right, so let's take that file now and copy it back to the laptop over the network. We'll just go ahead and move it back here. And here we go, we're getting what we should be getting here, well over two gigabits of bandwidth moving that same file back onto the laptop in the reverse direction. So altogether, it looks as though we are getting the advertised speed out of these things. Now, one thing to note about Mocha is that it's not a full duplex protocol. That means you don't get two and a half gigs downstream and upstream at the same time. It is two and a half gigabits for the network that it gets shared amongst the devices and the direction the data is flowing. So if you've got a gigabit downloading, you could maybe get away with another gigabit uploading, but you can't download two gigs and send up two gigs simultaneously. All right, now we're gonna get a little geekier with an iPerf test. iPerf is a free utility, it's available across most computing platforms, that allows you to test bottlenecks on your network. Basically what it does is it sends data from one computer to another, and you can completely saturate your network and see if you've got anything in between that's fouling things up. And I was having a really hard time getting the full bandwidth out of this test. And it was really getting confusing to me because we were getting the full speed out of my internet connection and those file transfers that we were doing earlier. But as you can see here, this test is only giving me about 400 megabits per second of performance. And I think there's something about how iPerf works related to how these things work. Because if I run the same test here, but instead have it run across multiple threads, what you'll see now is that we get the speeds that we are anticipating here. And if you look down, down there at the bottom, 2.36 gigabits per second. So for whatever reason, if you're testing your Mocha devices with iPerf, this is how you can get a good sense as to whether or not they're working correctly. And what I'll do here is reverse the connection here too. So we'll have the data get sent from the computer I'm connecting to back to the laptop here. And as you can see, we're getting about the same speed in the reverse direction. So altogether, I think we are getting the advertised speeds. Uh, just know that we are in kind of the perfect environment here because these two devices are the only two on this Mocha network and there's no other data getting transited. So if you have more Mocha devices, that of course will eat into that pooled bandwidth. So in summation, I am very pleased with these Mocha adapters. I like the performance we're seeing out of them. I like the fact that you've got two ethernet jacks on the back that can be used at the same time. So you could plug your computer and your game console into it, for example. It's good to have the two and a half gigabit ethernet here that will also run at lower speeds. Lots of flexibility with this. I like that you've got the splitter built in here too, so you can plug your TV in without having to get more cables and splitters and everything else. And they even give you a little coax patch cable in the box to enable that connection. So altogether, a nice box here. They don't get too warm. They don't use all that much power. Uh, they're not hard to get going. 
These will generally work over a 300 foot cable length. If for some reason they're not working, what I would do is start hunting down all the splitters you have in your cable setup because generally these are the failure points. You'll often see splitters that don't support the frequency range. You swap them out for Mocha compatible splitters and you're up and running. At a minimum though, I would suggest getting that point of entry filter. That will prevent any of your data from leaking outside the house. It's a good security measure and it also sometimes helps improve the performance of the network, especially if there are other Mocha devices it might be discovering. So get that PoE filter installed, very easy to do, and I think you'll be in good shape. And I do suggest getting the security enabled on these devices as well. It's a little bit of work to get the first one going through the web-based control panel, but because you've got these MPS buttons here, it's very easy to get other devices connected to that security. These are interoperable with other Mocha devices, so slower ones, older ones, no big deal. As long as you've got less than 16, they will work with anything else that you've got there without any performance penalties, even if you've got a bunch of slower ones on the network. So altogether, I remain a big fan of Mocha. Even though it is a little complex at times, it really does deliver performance that is very close to Ethernet. Ethernet is still the best way to go, but if you can't do it because of a rental situation or you just don't want to spend the money, if you got those cable jacks in the wall, this will work and deliver really good performance. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.